powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Hello, good Sunday evening, folks. Thank you so much for tuning into the Q2 Weekend News. I'm Dustin Kleeman. The White House is doing damage control with top White House advisors appearing on Sunday morning political shows. They defended the president's response to the resignations of two senior White House staffers, both accused of spousal abuse. CBS News' Laura Podesta has the very latest on the scandals. Members of President Trump's administration are speaking out about the departure of senior aide Rob Porter and speechwriter David Sorensen. Both are accused of abusing their former wives. Both have denied the allegations. I think what you saw uh, the president go through this week, and I don't know if you all played the video of the, the speech that he gave or the comment that he made, um, he was extraordinarily saddened by this. As you probably know, he says he's innocent. The president spoke well of Porter on Friday, two days after this photo of Porter's former wife was released. The president then tweeted Saturday, people's lives are being shattered and destroyed by a mere allegation. There is no recovery for someone falsely accused. One of Porter's ex-wives wrote in Time magazine, there it is again, the words mere allegation and falsely accused meant to imply that I'm a liar. He never should have been in the chair. Democratic Congressman Patrick Maloney said Sunday that the allegations of abuse should have been flagged over a year ago when Porter started working as staff secretary. You cannot have someone seeing our nation's secret who has a secret of their own. They, they are so easy to blackmail. That's why you do a background check. And now there are questions about Chief of Staff John Kelly's future, although officials say the president does not intend to fire him. As long as Donald Trump is president, our government is best served if John Kelly's in the job of chief of staff. A White House official told the Associated Press Kelly has not offered to resign. Laura Podesta, CBS News. CBS News has also learned Porter informed Chief of Staff John Kelly back in November that his ex-wives had made accusation that Porter denies. Also amid sexual misconduct allegations, Wyoming's Secretary of State has resigned. The news service Buckrail reports Ed Murray's resignation is immediate. Murray says he needs to focus on his marriage, family, and health. Back in December and January, two women came forward with allegations of misconduct by Murray, including forcibly kissing a babysitter and molestation of an intern 35 years ago. Murray denied both allegations, saying he and his family were devastated by them. Deputy Secretary of State Karen Wheeler will serve as the interim Secretary of State until replacement is appointed by the governor. Back here in Montana, a Helena woman is dead after striking a tree on a snowmobile northwest of town. 34-year-old Laura Park struck a tree on Mullen Pass Saturday afternoon. She was pronounced dead at the scene. No further updates have been provided. Man is behind bars after firing a gun as law enforcement officers responded to a domestic disturbance call Saturday night. 21-year-old striker Navarre Miller is accused of pointing a gun at a woman at a Helena home. SWAT team was called to arrest Miller. He allegedly fired the gun twice. No one was injured. Miller was arrested. He now faces several felony charges. To the Magic City, St. Francis Catholic School will be open for class on Monday after flooding at the school this weekend. The main water line going into the building broke, causing flooding up to four feet in parts of the school. It happened around 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Opening this door helped get some of the water out of the building, as you can see it gushing out. Billings Fire Department responded, but because of the snow and ice, it took a while to find the main water valve. It caused flooding in the choir room, the band and orchestra room, and in the gym. Today, crews cleaned up, started some of the restoration and repair process. Flooding damaged musical instruments, books, and papers. For teachers, the commons area also received some flooding, but the kitchen was not damaged. In the gym, crews have been trying to dry out the floor and fix any parts that have been separated. Two restoration companies and a construction company worked on the cleanup today. We'll have to cut out sheetrock, uh, check out the electrical and make sure that it's safe, and kind of go back to the studs and start over again. I have every confidence in the world that our kids will be well, well cared for. It matters how we role model for them that we handle it. And to be able to tell them, all the people in the community and the people at School District 2 who called and offered support, that's caring for each other and caring for people who are around you and wanting the best for our community. Harrington says School District 2 administration, including Superintendent Terry Belk, have reached out. Music teachers have already started setting up in another classroom. Again, class will go on as expected tomorrow. 
The new vaccine recommended for older adults and the latest of the CDC on the nation's flu epidemic. Where Podesta has a look at some of the week's top health stories. This year's flu season is as bad as the swine flu pandemic from 2009, according to the CDC. One in every 13 visits to the doctor last week was for flu-like symptoms. Deaths so far are not as high as some recent bad seasons. Health officials will know next week if this year's flu vaccine has been effective. Only about half of patients newly diagnosed with depression start treatment, according to a study by Kaiser Permanente. Researchers found stigma, race, and age are some of the factors as to why patients refuse to get help. And new recommendations from a federal advisory committee call for adults 50 years and older to get the new shingles vaccine called Shingrix. The vaccine was approved in 2017. The panel says even adults who've received the older vaccine should get the new one. Shingles is a painful rash and becomes more common with age. Those are some of the week's top health stories. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. The total number of flu cases in Montana at last checked, 4,269. 24 people have died. Before we go to break, this weekend, Race to the Sky Montana hit their third year dog sled race in Lincoln. MTN's Lindsay Ford spoke with a couple of competitors about how they got into the sport. On Saturday, the sun was out with a great number of people excited to see some dog sledding. Race to the Sky Montana dog sled race held 21 competitors for 2018, coming from different towns in Montana and other states. Lori Warren from Idaho says she's been racing for six years and got into dog sledding because of her eldest son. So I would go to the races with him and help him out and sit in the truck a lot and drum my fingers and wait for him. And they had some dogs that weren't doing well for him. And I decided, well, instead of sitting here, I'll just go run their dogs a little bit. Warren is competing in the 300 mile adult race. Trevor, my youngest son, encouraged me to run a race and I just was addicted. I really, really enjoy it. I love working with the dogs. I love being outside. There's nothing better than being up in the mountains where you can't get otherwise with your best friends. Before the race, some mushers wrap their dogs' paws to protect them from cuts and ice packed in between. Charmaine Morrison from Polson, Montana competed in the 100 mile junior race. Morrison got into dog sledding because of a school project. She built a sled, started off with three dogs, and then expanded to 17 Alaskan Huskies. I think my favorite part is just being the connection with the dogs and having, you know, a bond with each and every one of them. And they're, you know, kind of my family, extended family, I guess. Morrison's been mushing for five seasons, and this is her second year racing. Morrison said her friends and family were surprised that she took on this sport. And it's definitely taken a little getting used to. Uh, never been a big dog family, but now we are, so. Travis Schweigert, Charmaine's father, said it's been great to help his daughter with her passion of dog sledding. I am very proud of her, and it's, it's fun seeing her excel. Mushers will be traveling to Avando and Sealy Lake for the 100 mile finish and 300 milers will continue back through Avando and finish at High Country Snack Foods near Lincoln. Lindsay Ford, MTN News, Lincoln. Just the right temperature for it too. Still ahead on the Q2 530 News on this Sunday, the coldest Olympics in decades, but Team USA staying warm. We'll show you how on the other side of the break. And later in sports, one of the coolest moments of the all class state wrestling tournament happened in the first 20 minutes Friday morning. That story coming up at the Weather Center. Brett McCrumman is tracking inbound snow. That's right. We do have inbound snow. Let's take a look outside with our uh, first interstate eye cam and uh, light snow is falling here in Billings. We've got eight degrees northeast winds at 21 miles an hour makes it feel like 12 degrees below zero and chilly temperatures and snow will continue through tomorrow. We'll have your complete forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you.